وذعرفت الله ربي حلوة 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 حياتي مذ عرفت الله ربي أشرق النور بقلبي ملأل بشروح حياتي مذ أضاء الله دربي يا لسعدي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم الحمد لله Last week we started this book, Safina Tul Najah. Naam? Yes. We started this book, Safina Tul Najah, and we did Arkanul Islam and Arkanul Iman. But from here, we start some of the things that do with fiqh. And the author started with Alamatul Bulu, the signs of legal maturity. When does a person become mature legally in Islamic Sharia? When does a person become accountable? And this is a good beginning because then whatever <coughs> comes after that, it means this is what is compulsory or this is what is uh, permissible or this is what is masnoon, mandu on that person. Some other books have different way of starting their books where they talk about, for example, because every book starts with tahara, but they might start with uh, the things that Wasailu tahara for example, water and sand, or wasailu wasail where they talk about the things that carry water, for example, and they talk about the use of gold. Is gold allowed to be used, or when is this, or if it's used to, you know, bring uh, a broken boat together? But because this is an, a beginner's book, so he talked about the signs of legal maturity. So he says, Alamatul Bulugi Thalath. He says there are three signs of legal maturity. Three signs that make somebody balig. Tamamu Khamsa Asharata Sanatan Fiddakari Wal Untha. When a person becomes 15 years of age, whether male or female, when he becomes 15 years of age. And this is exact 15 years of age by lunar months, because in Islam we use lunar months. We don't use, uh, you know, the solar months, January and February and so on. We use lunar months. And the hikmah is that a person, even the lay person, can know the time, can know the date and the months. But with the shams, you need to be somebody who is into the stars or some measurement or that. So according to the lunar months, if somebody becomes 15 years of age exactly, from the day that he was born, then he has become balig, he has become legally mature, whether they are male or, or female. <coughs> That's the first sign. The second sign, he says, al ihtilamu fi dhakari wal untha sinin, to have a wet dream, male or female, when they reach the age from the age of nine. And here, we want to see, the point of this is that the coming out of the reproduction water, you know, semen, that makes somebody balig because it doesn't come out until somebody becomes legally mature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in such a way that if that comes out, then that person has become legally mature. He has become accountable. He knows what is right and he knows what is wrong. And in the fiqh shafi'i, we say that before the age of nine, that cannot come out. But when it reaches the age of nine, then this is, from that age, a person can become valid by ihtilam, by a wet dream, if the money comes out, whether it's male or female. It is nine years, and this is approximately. The 15 years are exactly, but for nine years it is approximately. So if somebody at the age of 10, he has a wet dream, meaning that in his dream, money comes out, then that person, he wakes up from that dream and he is valid has become legally mature. So al-ihtilamu fi dhakari wal untha litis'i sinin, having a wet dream in males and females when they reach the age of nine approximately. Before the age of nine, then that is not accountable. That probably is something else or maybe it's a disease, Allahu Akbar. The third sign is al-haydhu fi al-untha litis'i sinin, haydh, the monthly uh, period in women. Because when that comes out, 
it means that the womb has become ready. The womb becomes ready to accept to in preparation for the male's water. If nothing happens in that time, then the womb discharges that preparation. So when it comes out, it comes out as blood. So if a woman has monthly period, it means that she has she is now has reached that age where she can become a mother and legally she has become mature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bring that on a person unless they are legally matured. It might be different from age to age or from people to people, but when they become legally mature, when their mind has become complete, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that ability to the women. So if a woman has a monthly period, then she has become legally mature. And we say that it can happen from the age of nine. Before the age of nine, that is not possible. But after the age of nine, any time is possible. From the, after the age of nine, a woman can have monthly periods. When that happens, then she has become legally mature. And this blood comes from the womb. Okay, so if blood comes from any other part, then that is not considered. That becomes, uh, what do you call, sick blood. You know, somebody is sick, that's why the blood is coming out. This comes out not because of sickness. This is a healthy blood. And they say that a woman who has periods, then she is healthy, she can have children and so on. Very little blood means the womb is infertile. Yeah. So this is healthy blood. It comes from the womb. So when this blood comes out, this person has become legally mature. They have become balif. And we say nine years approximately. By approximately mean it can be before nine years by one cycle. So a cycle, we say that the least amount of cycle is 16 days. 15 days of tuhur, cleanliness, and one day and one night of uh, hayr, blood. So that makes 16 days. So if it comes before nine years, within the 16 days, then we say this is hayr, so she becomes bad. If it comes before that, then this is a, you know, uh, blood that is caused by sickness. So any of these three signs, the coming out of money from the man or woman, uh, from the age of nine, the coming out of the monthly period in the women from the age of nine, or the reaching of 15 years of age, according to lunar months, not uh, the ones we're having now. So somebody, in, if he's using uh, the Julian calendar, then when he is 15, it means probably he was 15 years uh, old six months ago, according to the lunar months. Because every 30 or 31 years, every 30 or 31 years, uh, it, if he's 30 years in Julian calendar, it means he's 31 years Islamically, something like that. So these three signs, if anybody these three signs come upon a person, he becomes legally mature. This is according to the fiqh shafi. Of course, in other fiqh, the age might differ. For example, according to the Ahnaf, the age is different. Or some other madhahib like Ahmad bin Hanbal, they might have, for example, the pubic hair is a sign of you know, legal maturity. But in the fiqh shafi, these are the only three signs. al uh, ihtilam the wet dream. Okay, it doesn't have to be a wet dream. The point is coming out of the money, whether it comes out in a dream or it comes out outside the dream and the blood and the reaching of 15 years of age these are the signs of blue <coughs> and the musannif then the author goes into the next uh, section he says shurutu ijza il hajari thamaniya the conditions that make when somebody does istinja then he's in those days and even now Somebody might need to use a stone or something that is in the form of a stone, for example, tissues or th something like that. So we need to know which conditions make that kind of istinja sufficient. Yes, and istinja is the cleaning of the nudges that comes out of the human being through the two ways. Uh, and that nudges, when it comes out, it is uh, soiling or staining the area then when you clean that, it is istinja. But if najis is on this part of the body, 
even whether it is urine or otherwise, if you clean it from this part of the body, this is not called istinja. Uh, or cleaning the blood from your hand, this is not called istinja. Istinja is called when you clean the, the najis that comes out of the two ways, from the area of coming out. So if najis comes out and it is on your foot and you are cleaning it, uh, somebody goes to the urine, to the urinals and when he is doing it standing and urine comes on his feet and he is cleaning his feet. That's not called istinja. Istinja is cleaning it, cleaning the nudges from the area it's coming from. This is called istinja. So when somebody does istinja, he uses, he can use uh, the stone or water. Using both is mas mah ma masnoon and mustahab in the Islamic Sharia. So he uses stone first and then he uses water. The people of Quba, they used to do this. The Arabs were not used to using water. They used only to use stones. But the people of Quba, they used to use stones. Then they used to use water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he praised them. He says, uh, a masjid that was, uh, its foundation was built on piety. There are people there who like to cleanse themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah yuhibbul mudattahin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who cleanse themselves. So it is sunnah for people to use both things. Uh, but it has to be that you use the stone first and then you use the water. If you use the water first, then that's it. There is no place for using the stone. Because the istinja, the stone takes away the najis, all of it. But it leaves a little bit of athar. It leaves a little bit of uh, some kind of, you know, remainder that can never be taken away except with water. Okay. So if you use water, then there is no need for using the stone or tissue or whatever. So you, you can use both, or you can use one of them, it is jais. If you use a stone by itself, fine. If you use water by itself, fine. If you use both, then it's better to use stone. You use stone first and then water. If you use to use water first, then you can never use the stone again. And the meaning of hajar here, it means kullu jamidin. Everything that is solid, tahirin, clean, qali'in, that takes away the najis. So anything that takes away the najis, that is also in here, in, it's regarded as hajar. Because the thing that does is tinja with. So tissue, it is qali, it is jamid, it is solid, okay? It is tahir, it is clean, it is uh, qali, taking away the najis, it takes it away. And it has to be a ghayru muhtar, I mean, it is not uh, revered in Islam, okay? So you can't use paper of ilm, you can't use papers that is written Allah or Quran in it, you can't use food because food is muhtaram in Islam, you can't use the bones of people who are dead because that is muhtaram in Islam, okay, it has to be qala, it takes away, so you can't use a piece of plastic, uh, not a piece of plastic, what do you call plastic bags, because that slides, isn't it, it has to be jam, it's solid, so you can't use something which is not solid, because you're going to smear the area. So it has to be jamid, every jamid, solid, tahir, clean. So even if you take, for example, in the desert, sometimes you find the remains of uh, animals' excretion, and it is solid, okay? But you can't use that because it is not tahir. So it has to be tahir, solid, and tahir, and qali', it takes it away, and ghayru muhtaramin, it is not does not have hurma, uh, it is not elevated in Islam, it does not have any kind of reverence in Islam. Okay, so there are eight shurut, thamaniyatu shurut, for making this act sufficient. Before that we need to know the ruling of istinja. When does istinja become wajib? And when does istinja become mandub? And when does istinja become mubah? So istinja is wajib if the thing that is coming out is mulawith, it stains the area. So if it stains the area, it has become wajib for somebody to do istinja. Okay. If it stains the area when it's coming out, it stains the place it's coming out, it soils it, okay, it tarnishes it, then istinja has become wajib, whether to use stone or water. <laughs> it becomes mandub becomes mustahab. If the thing that is coming out is jamid, because we have a rule in fiqh shafi that the thing which is uh, 
the thing which is solid and it is dry. Then even if you touch a nudges dry and something else which is dry, the nudges does not transfer to the other area. So for example, if somebody went and a stone comes out, just a stone comes out by itself, dry and it's solid. So he does not stay in the area. So therefore it is not wajib for him to do his tinja. But it is mustahab and mandub for him to do his tinja. It is only wajib when it stains the area or tarnishes it. But if it comes out in such a way it doesn't, for example, a solid dry thing comes out, then it is mustahab. <coughs> if, for example, he has wind, wind comes out of him, and he wants to do his tinja, it is makru for him to do his tinja, because this is waste of water. <coughs> so it is makru for him to do his tinja from, from wind. Whenever he passes wind, he goes and does his tinja. It is makru. It is permissible for him to do his tinja because of sweat. Uh, a person, he was jogging, he was exercising and this, and a lot of sweat comes out. <coughs> so it is mubah for him to do that. He will not get thawab for it because it is not compulsory or anything. And it is not, he will not get any, any sins for him if he doesn't do it. So it is permissible for him. And it is haram to do istinja with things that are not permissible for you to do it. For example, something which is stolen. Okay, or something which is, uh, for example, you use the, a piece of Quran. This is muhtaram. So this becomes haram. To use something for istinja which is haram for you makes that istinja also haram. So these are the legal ruling of doing istinja. And most of us, when we do istinja, it is because it is wajib. You know, the, when the najis comes out, it soils the area. This is when it becomes wajib. <coughs> so there are eight shurut. The first shart is that it has to be, if you're doing istinja with stones, then it has to be with three stones or three wipes. Anything less than that, <coughs> that istinja has not become sufficient. So if somebody was to use tissue, he has to use three wipes. Okay. And then if it's clean, fine. If it's not clean, it is wajib for him to use another wipe until it becomes clean. So he will use the fourth time. If it becomes clean, fine. If he wants to add another fifth, it is sunnah so that he can make it wither. If it is on the fifth, it is clean, fine. If it's not, he has to add another sixth. But less than three wipes, it is not permissible. Because you can never make yourself clean with less than three wipes. So it has to be three stones. And by three stones, we mean three wipes. So even you can use a tissue the same tissue from different areas three times. Or for example, if somebody has a big stone, he can use three areas of that same stone, fine. Or he can use the same stone if he only has one stone. So he uses the stone, he cleans it, he wipes it, it's dry. He uses it the second time, he cleans it with water, he dries it, he uses it the third time, it is fine. You need to do three wipes, no matter how you do it. This is the compulsory, less than three, it makes it not sufficient. And if, it, is, if you, it hasn't been cleaned by three times, then you need to add another wipe until it becomes clean. So it has to be with three wipes. أَنْ يَكُونَ بِثَلَاثَةِ أَحْجَارِ وَأَنْ يُنْقِيَ الْمَحَلْ And that the place becomes clean. So even if you do istinja and the place remains dirty, then your istinja is not sufficient. أَنْ يُنْقِيَ الْمَحَلْ so we need to know what is the mahal, the place. <coughs> Al mahal, it is the safha and the hashafa. The safha is where uh, the excretion comes out. So the exterior part, they say around, you know, the size of a dirham. Or if you stand up, the part that is being brought together, joined together. Huh? So that place has to be clean. Okay, uh, so that is the safha, uh, males and females. The hashafa is the head of a male's body part. That is the, the, the hashafa. So it has to be clean as well. So if somebody is urinating, by cleaning we mean that that place has to be clean. Okay, al mahal. If it is not clean, then the istinja is not fine. For the women, it is the exterior part of her private part. So she has to wash that part. And she has to wash 
that the urine does not go anywhere else. If it goes in any other, you know, places, then she has to use water because the stone cannot clean it anymore. So she has to use to wash uh, the exterior of her farj, uh, the exterior of her farj. She has to wash to wash that. So you have to wash the sabha and the hashafa. And yunqi al mahal that the place has to be clean. So an yakuna bi thalathati ahjar. So an yunqi al mahal. And la yajif al najis. That the najis does not become dry. If the najis becomes dry, you have to use water. You cannot use hajar anymore. So you have to make sure that the najis does not become dry. And la yantakil. That the najis does not move from one area to another. Even if it is within the safha or within the hashafa. So if the najis moves from one area, because istinja is a permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when somebody has to watch out. If the najis is moving all over the area, it means you're using a stone, it won't be able to clean it. You have to use water now. So you have to make sure that when somebody is preparing to go to do istinja with paper or stone, he has to watch out how he is doing it so that the najis does not move around. So, an la yantaqila an najis. The najis does not move from one area to another area. So, for example, if the najis is coming out from here, and then suddenly without he's moving around and the najis, this is where it's coming out from. But now the najis has moved from here to here. It did not trickle, but it moved from here to here. That means now here the najis is not from its coming out place. That place needs water now. You cannot do with hajar anymore. So, an la yantaqil al mahal, whether it's outside the des designated area or whether it's within the designated area. But if it's coming out from the inside and it goes out a little bit into the designated area, then it's fine because it's, it's coming out. But if it's moving now, this is where it's coming out, and somebody is moving around, he's, he moved around, and the drops, they move from one area to another area. You have to use water now because this now has become not istinja anymore. It's not from its coming out area. And when we use istinja, we, use, we are allowed to use hajar. But when we are cleaning najasa from another area, you can't say I'm going to, do, to remove it with stone or tissue. You have to use what? Water. So this is not istinja anymore. So you have to make sure it does not move from its... From an la yantaqila. The najis does not... An la yatra alayhi akhar that nothing foreign comes onto that najis. Nothing foreign comes onto that najis. So somebody has urinated <coughs> and suddenly a little bit of water comes on top of that najis. Okay, so now you can't use stone anymore. Or khilaf uh, bayna ibn Hajar and Ramli whether anything, even if it's tahir. But the khilaf says some say anything, some say if it's tahir it does not matter. But nothing else should come to that, except if it's uh, sweat, then that is fine because nobody can prevent his sweat coming out. So anything else mixes with that najis, then it's not called istinja anymore. You have to use water. So an la yatra alayhi akhar. If it is the same najasa coming out, then it's fine. You know, somebody is urinating, he stopped a little bit, and he's urinating more, then that is fine because it is of the same kind. If it's a different najis, blood, from another part of the body also, then that is a foreign object. So, Allah yatra alayhi akhar, that no foreign object, anything else should go on to it. And the sixth one, Allah yujawiza safhatahu wa hashafatahu, which is very important. That the designated area, the hashafa and safha. When the najis, when somebody is going into is going into going to the toilet has to watch out that it does not go out of that area so the head of the dhakar the male body part so when he is urinating if it comes out from the makhraj and it just trickles a little bit to the side as long as it doesn't come out from the head then that is fine if it comes out of the head it means now the najasa, najasa has spread over the body so you can't use you can't use, you have to use water. You can't use stones anymore. Yes? Or the safha. Huh? If the najasa has come out and it's spread, has surfaced, the safha itself, huh? the part where if somebody stands up, it comes together, then he can't use, he can't use uh, 
uh, stone anymore or tissue or whatever. So he has to watch out. People who go out to camps and things like that, when they want to go, they have to watch out how they're doing it. So that is why it is sunnah to sit down. You know, so that when you sit down, you come right down and the makhraj is really low. And when it, the najasa comes out, it does not spread in different areas. Hmm. So Allah yujawiza safhatahu wa hashafatahu that it should not surpass, exceed the safha and hashafa. Allah yusibahuma that no water comes onto the najasa and an takuna al ahjaru tahira and that the stones should be clean or anything that is in the form of, of stone. Okay. So the stone has to be clean. It shouldn't be of najasa or it has najasa on it. So a tissue that has najasa on it, you can't do istinja with it. Or if the thing itself is najis, for example, a dried you know, feces, you can't do istinja with it. But if somebody wants to do a sunnah, okay, so for example, he is in the desert and there is uh, feces of animals, okay, and it's dry and he doesn't have any stones around, but he has water. So what he can do, they say that you can do istinja with that and then use water. So you get the sunnah of using something before water. But it does not clean because it has to be tahir. Al-ahjar la buddha an takuna tahir. Okay, these are the eight uh, shurut that makes the using of uh, stones permissible in istinja. And we talked what is istinja. It is the removing of the najasa from the exit place. And that is called istinja. And not any najasa, but the najasa that comes out of that exit. And there are eight shurut for it. That the stones have to be, it has to be three stones, or we say three wipes. It has to clean the area. And that the najis, make sure that the najis does not become dry. Because once the najis become dry, it becomes imprinted on the, on the body. And if you use stone to remove it, it does not come out anymore. You know, you cannot clean it. And la yantaqila, that the najasa should not move, even if it's moving in the designated area. And that no foreign thing should touch the najasa. And also, when performing the, when somebody's in the toilet, <coughs> You should watch out and lay ujawiza safhatahu wa hashafatahu that she should not exceed the hashafa which is the head of the male part and safha is this, the area that is that comes together when somebody is standing up and that not water, no water should touch that place and when we say that no foreign thing should touch it I think water comes into here as well and that the stones should be should be clean and when we said stones, we meant by stones every solid kullu jamidin, every solid thing, kullu uh, jamidin, tahirin, clean, qali'in, the one that takes out najasa, and ghayru muhtaramin, should not have hurma or ihtiram, respect in Islam. So anything that is solid, clean, that takes away najasa, and is not respected in Islam, then that somebody can do can do is tinja with it. Inshallah, we stop here, inshallah, and then uh, next week, inshallah, we start with Shurutul uh, Arkanul Udu, inshallah. Any questions? It doesn't have to be Tahir. It doesn't have to. So, uh, in the context of today's society, we use a lot of tissues. Yes. Um, would that fulfill the sunnah? Yes, a tissue. Or do you have to have a stone? No, no, no. I said everything. By stone here, we mean everything that is solid. So, the tissue is solid. It is not liquid. And it is clean. And it takes away the najasa. Because when you, when you scrape the najasa, it removes the najasa. If you are to scrape it with something solid, uh, sorry, liquid, it cannot take away the najasa. And if it is not solid, for example, something. So we shouldn't have stones in the house or something. Just say we're fulfilling the sunnah. 
No, the, any, we said by stone, we mean anything that fulfills this. So this, is, this will be, because in the, if, we, if we start mentioning stone, paper, wood, then the book will be filled with all these things. So we just say stone, but the stone represents anything that is uh, solid, clean, takes away the najasa, and it is not respected in Islam. Because if it is respected, then you're supposed to, you're not supposed to do stinja with it. Now, any other question? Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah